Hi, Jeff Maloshek here with Balin Country, and today we're going to talk about a basic installation on one of our electric livestock waters. All right, what we're going to talk about first here is when the customer gets their fountain, we're going to disassemble it and make sure all the parts are here. Starting off with taking the lid off. This model here is our AHW100. First, we're going to take out the four stainless steel screws to remove the water trough. All right, next we'll remove the trough by picking up on the left-hand side. It gives you access to your heating pad, your hardware kit, and your installation hose. And inside you'll see you're going to have your instruction manual, your float, your plug, and your seals. Typically you want to have your ball valve for shut off inside, but you want to have it about this height here. So we're going to go ahead and cut that pipe off. All right, as we said before, our, wa our waters come with a three quarter inch water line. In this case, the customer has a one inch water line where we installed a shut off valve for easy maintenance. What we'll need to do is change this down or reduce it from one inch to three quarter inch by putting in this hose nipple. Anytime we do any of the plastic fittings, you still want to put any Teflon or pipe dope on there to help give it a good seal. All right, next we're going to put on two hose clamps just for a little added security. One thing you want to make sure you do, in this case we installed a six inch riser tube or earth tube. This needs to go down below your frost line at least and in the bottom you want to have gravel in case you have any moisture that goes down. You want to make sure your water line does not touch either side of your riser. Otherwise if it's cold here it can pull up that cold and start freezing your pipe. So like I said this one here is right at six inches. We have our 110 volts running up through and our one inch water line in this case but we ideally will want three quarter inch. All right, now that we got our water line ready, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the base to mount down to the concrete. With our extreme drinker, the AHW100, one of the nice features on this, it's got a solid poly bottom on it. If you'll notice, there's four holes here. They're guide holes that are molded in where you wanna be able to secure this down. An easy way to do it is take a 3 8 inch drill bit and drill down through to mark your pilot holes. Now we'll have a guide or a template to show us where we want to put our concrete lags in. You want to center the fountain on the pad in between these two poles in this case. We'll have the access door on the side, one basin on one side and one basin on the other so that we can do two different pins. In this case we put a five foot by five foot concrete pad which is plenty for the animals to drink off of. We recommend having at least a four inch space on the side of the fountain over the, over the width of the fountain. So this one here is five foot by five foot and at least four inches thick. This one here is right at six inches thick. We're going to mount this with the access door facing this side. So just as a template, we'll go ahead and set it down over the water line. Run your electrical wire and your water pipe up through the middle. On the ASW100, we have a six inch access hole in the bottom. You want your riser pipe or earth tube to come all the way up and be flush with the bottom of that drinker to prevent any air from getting inside the chamber. That'll hurt the efficiency of the infrared heater. All right, once we have our drinker squared and you can see our four pilot holes, we're gonna go ahead and etch the concrete where we know to use a hammer drill. fountain and we'll have marks where we etched it 
where we know to use a hammer drill to put in the lag shields. In this case, we're going to use 3 8 inch bolts, and they'll have to use a 5 inch, 5 8 inch concrete bit to accept the lags. We're going to want to use a fender washer on the lag bolt to give us a maximum clamping force. We're going to want to install these lag shields into the holes. They're going to accept our four inch lag bolt. So now that we have our lag shields installed on top of the concrete here, no matter how smooth you get it, you still want to be able to seal this up because any air getting in on a 220 watt heater will take away the efficiency of it. So what we want to do, we're going to use 100% silicone and go around to the base of the fountain here so we get a good tight seal on the concrete. And you could be generous with this, use the whole tube to make sure you do get that good seal. All right, well you take that fender washer and the four inch, three eighths inch lag bolt. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and take an impact and secure them. All right. Now, next we're going to install the water line. So we're going to need to take out these two bolts to take out the access panel. All right, next we're going to take our basin with our supply line already hooked up and get a measurement of where we need to cut this off based on our supply line. And then drop that down in. Make sure your wires aren't getting pinched. Tilt it like this, get the drain hole lined up, and put the top down. Now we can go and take a measurement. Okay, now that we got our basin temporarily installed, we can see that we need to trim off about one foot of our water line so that we don't have any kinks when we hook it up to our main supply line. So we're going to need to trim our line off approximately a foot. Now that we got our nipple in, reduced down to three quarter inch hose, our basin side is trimmed off. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and slide the basin back in and your hose here is gonna go onto your nipple with a hose clamp to secure it. All right, inside here you have a junction box. This is where your electricity, your power gets hooked up to. Here is your thermostat and your two wires on your heating pad that will be hooked up by a licensed electrician. All right, let's go ahead and install our basin back on. Supply line hooked up to our valve. Now to tighten, now to tighten the clamp. Next, we're gonna take the stainless steel screws that we removed earlier to reinstall and secure the basin. And thread them at first. And then secure them down. Now that the basin's secured, we have a rubber gasket here. This prevents air from getting inside where the heating element is. You want to push that in approximately a quarter inch so that animals can't get to it, but yet it gives you a good seal. This unit's a little bit different than most of our drinkers. Your drain plug does get installed from the outside instead of the inside. Tighten your wing nut down, and you have a good secure fit. All right, our next step is we're gonna install the float onto the valve itself. Float just uses a plastic wing nut. You'll see one side has large cogs, the other side has small. You wanna match that up with the float arm on the small cogs on both sides. And that's what's gonna allow your adjustment and secure it down. And you also wanna adjust the float side, which is loose, so that it doesn't hit the side of the basin. All right, now we can go ahead and test the water connection, check for leaks here, down on the inside, 
to make sure that uh, once we do have the water on and animals drinking from it, we don't have any leaks. And this is where the shutoff valve right at the fountain definitely makes it easier. So you want to have it set so when it comes up, it shuts your water off and we can fine tune it once it gets a little bit higher. All the water connections are good, there's no leaks. We're going to go ahead and let this fill up. We want this to be able to shut off, not so it's overflowing, but you want to get as high as possible to get a good seal on the lid. You'll see as the water rises, it's pushing the float, which is putting the plunger in to seal off the water supply. This valve here is designed for anywhere between 25 pounds and 55 pounds of water pressure. If you go over that 55 to 60 pounds of water pressure, you may have to put a restrictor on there, otherwise you'll get drips like this because of the high pressure. If you go down below the 25 pounds of pressure, you may want to put a brass valve in, which is designed for pond water or low pressure valves, so it still is able to shut off without having the high pressure. Ideally, what you want to do is have your water level an inch to inch and a quarter down below the top of the trough. So as you can see here, we're right at where we need to be. And that was all by adjusting this wing nut here to allow more water to come in or less water. So now that we've made sure our water lines are all secured and not leaking, and our electrician has came and hooked up the electrical box, we're gonna go ahead and install your access cover. One option we do offer for our electric drinkers and energy-free drinkers is this kit right here, which is a shutoff kit. This allows you to shut off the water down below the frost line and drain your whole water line if you ever wanna take animals off, or if you need to shut the drinker, you don't want your line freezing, it allows you to drain it down below your frost line so that you don't have any problems with ice. Now that our drinker's installed and ready to use, if you're looking for more information, you can visit our website or call into our 800 number and ask for any assistance needed. Looking for instructions? You're able to download those off our website or request a catalog to see all the selections of items that we have.